Welcome to New Royal House of Pricey Cardboard. On today's episode of Commander Gameplay, I have a truly excellent game of EDH for you. Me and Kelly get together with Mathieu and our spiky friend Max for a webcam game. Max just finished his Brago deck and will be testing its power level. This Bragolis is a tuned down CDH version, looking to slow the game with some stacksy pieces that you can get around by flickering. The main combo of the deck, infinite flickers with Trionic Resonator. Once you get that going, it can make us sacrifice all our permanents or draw his entire library. As we had an idea of the kind of deck we were going in, I took out my Yuriko list. I think it's pretty much in the same realm as the Brago deck, not quite CDH, but pretty powerful for regular casual tables. I'm looking to take out my opponents with multiple Yuriko triggers, either revealing big CMC spells like Draco for 16 or taking some extra turns. I'm quite hyped about the newly spoiled Maskwood Nexus, as this deck can use a fourth way to turn all creatures into ninjas. Kelly brought our Sir Conrad the Grim to the fight. Conrad is the kind of commander who can close a game real quick even without an expensive list. Avian creatures, our best weapons are the Mesmeric Orb, Minecrank and Tortured Existence. Finally, Mathieu will be playing his Samut Voice of Descent. Featured on the episode 14 of Commander Gameplay, the Saskia list has evolved into Samut. The haste anthem makes a massive difference on getting those big creatures into play, and the untap ability is a nice bonus for mana tricks. His opening hand contains Beast Within, Escape the Wilds, Sea the Unwritten, Bloom Tender, Far Seek, Arcane Signet, and the Windswept Eath. Mathieu is the king of keeps into regrets. While he does have 3 pieces of ramp on 2, he needs to draw a land to start the match. Katie's opening hand contains Altar of Dementia, Plague Crafter, Mannequin, Dagmar Salvage, and 3 basic swamps. It's a pretty solid hand, she has enough mana from the start to cast Conrad on 4, the Altar is a great piece to deal damage, and a well placed Plague Crafter can kill some key creatures. My opening hand contains Tetsuko Umizawa Fugitive, Aether Gale, Talisman of Dominance, Nikto Shrine to Nyx, Drowned Catacomb, Dark Water Catacombs, and a basic swamp. It's a pretty good hand, I wish I had a second unblockable creature, but mana-wise I'm sure to not stumble. The Aether Gale can be a great reset on turn 4 if my opponents do anything other than land ramp. Dr. Maxim's opening hand contains Vencer the Sojourner, Omen of the Sea, Thought Vessel, Solemn Simulacrum, Academy Ruins, Sir Reliquary Tower, and a Prairie Stream. It's an okay hand, I think 3 lands and 2 pieces of ramp. It's lacking a little bit in the color department, but the Solemn on 3 will fix that if everything goes well. Brago will bring draw and ramp every turn with the Solemn and Omen. Kitty gets to start this off. And land drops a Dakmar Salvage. Dr. Max land drops Hallowed Fountain tapped. And I land drop a Drowned Catacomb. Mathieu land drops Windswept Eath, cracking it for a stomping ground tapped. Kitty land drops a Swamp and casts Mannequin. Dr. Max land drops an Island and casts Doubt Vessel. I top deck my Soul Ring, which drastically changed my turn too. I land drop a Swamp, cast the Soul Ring, and then cast Talisman of Indulgence. I finish by casting my intended turn 2, Tetsuko Omizawa Fugitive. Mathieu draws, skip his land drops, and pass. Kitty land drops a Swamp, and casts a Plague Crafter. She sacrificed the creature to its ETB, Max discards Salem Simulacrum, I sacrifice Tetsuko, and Mathieu discards Sea the Unwritten. She then goes to combat, attacking me with Mannequin. Dr. Max makes an expedition in the Academy Ruins. He then casts his commander, Brago, King Eternal. My rule burses beyond death itself. I land drop Darkwater Catacombs, and out of creatures in hand, cast my commander, Eureka the Tiger's Shadow. They're already here. Matthew draws and land drops Spectator Seeding. He then casts Arcane Signet. Katie land drops another basic swamp, and joins the commander party with Sir Conrad the Grim. Would you look at that? I guess not everyone can live happily ever after. Il y a pourquoi tu gardes la mano open? Ah, je sais pas. Ça te stresse tu? Il veut qu'un turn mais il rap. Ah, tu gosses. Now you know how it feels. <laughs> Max Lynch just query tower. And cast Vencer the Sojourner. Plus to Vencer to flicker his island at the end of turn. Uh, Yuriko, ça vole pas? No. <laughs> I put keyword. Brago, please, please no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> ça serait dégueu que ça vole pas, vrai. Oui, oui. Going to combat, Brago attacks me. The commander triggers, and Dr. Max flickers his commander and the top vessel. 
Hidden Pass, Allen Drop Ink Mod Nexus. I end into combat, sending Yuriko to Matthew. Yuriko triggers and reveals Shizzle Dead Star House, losing zero to my opponents. In second main, I cast Aether Gale, targeting basically all my opponents' permanents. In reaction, Max casts Omen of the Sea. He scries two and draws on ETB. My spell then resolves and I shift the turn to map. He draws and land drops Branch Love Pathway. He recasts his Arcane Signet and follow it up with Farseek, explaining to us that his end made sense once he got a second land. He gets a Temple Garden on the battlefield. Kelly land drops Wish Cottage. Since she controls three swamps, she can put her Plague Crafter on top of her deck. She then casts Aloy Mirror and Mannequin. <rire> Pétition pour renommer les mires en Guernot. <rire> Avec un E. Guernot. Guernot. We go to Max turn and he land drops a seat of the Synod. He recasts Tout Vessel and follow it up with Talisman of Progress. After that, he casts Rishadan Cut Purse. I'm very happy about my open mana and gladly pay one. Mathieu sacrifices Arcane Signet and Kelly sacrifices Dakmar Salvage. He then pass. I end up Shizo Dead Star House and go straight to combat. I decide to make a move for the table and attack Dr. Max instead of the open Mathieu. I offer him to stop my trigger in exchange of his cut purse. He takes the deal and blocks. I then pass. Mathieu casts Ignite the Future. He exiles a forest, Sylvan Library and Mana Crypt that he can play until the end of his next turn. He lands up the forest and casts Mana Crypt. He then casts Bloom Tender, forgetting about the Plague Crafter about to come back. Kelly land drops a swamp and recast Plague Crafter. Me and Mathieu sacrifice our only creature and Max discards Venser. Kelly then casts Perpetual Timepiece, following up with Altar of Dementia, before shipping the turn to Max. Max land drops Polytet Delta, trucking it for a basic island. Uh, oh, the struggle! Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ça rentre pas par tout, mon dieu! <laughs> You disgust me. <laughs> he then casts Yorion the Sky Nomad. Entering the battlefield, he flickers his rocks and the omen. Going to the end step, he gets to scry 2 and draw. I go to my turn and pay 1 to turn my Ink Mod into a creature. Heading into combat, I send the Ink Mod to Kelly. As no blockers are declared, I ninjutsu my commander and deal her 1 damage. Yuriko triggers and I reveal Limdul's Vault, losing 2 to my opponents. In second main, I land drop my Ink Mod as my land for turn. I then cast Sakeshima the Imposter, entering as a copy of my commander. At Matthew's upkeep, he fails his Mana Crypt trigger. In his main phase, he casts Escape the Wilds, exiling Bountiful Promenade, Wooded Foothills, Worldly Tutor, Crack Ground Pathway, and Austere Commands. He can play those until his next turn as well. Escape the Wilds grants an extra land drops, and Matthew uses it to play two lands from the exile. He then gives the turn to Kelly, and his Sylvan Library leaves the realm of castable cards. Kelly then drops Castle Lactwain, and casts Lightning Greaves. She then casts her commander, Sir Conrad the Grim, immediately equipping the boots to grant it some protection. She then activates Perpetual Timepiece, milling Fleshbag Marauder and Massacre Worm. Conrad triggers twice. Dr. Max then drops Prairie Streams, and casts Cloud of Fairies. Entering the battlefield, he untaps the lands he just used, and then casts Mystic Remora. At this point, I've been holding on my Fierce Guardianship for a problematic card and wonder if this is the right target. Max is currently out of cards in hand, and in my turn I plan on casting at least Limdol's Vault and possibly the Counter to protect it. I decide to Counter the fish. <gasps> Mon petit maudit. He then recasts Brago and pass. At my upkeep, I cast Limdol's Vault. Mathieu reacts by casting a Beast Within to destroy my second Yuriko. Conrad triggers for one. Dr. Max and Kelly share a moment of having no cards in hand and then I resolve my Limdu's Vault. I pay one life to bottom my first five and rearrange the second pile. I go to my draw step and then main phase. I once again go to combat, sending my commander to Mathieu. Yuriko triggers and I reveal Arcan Adaptation. In second main, I cast Time Warp. I land drop a swamp before going to my extra turn. I untap and land drops Nyctos Shrine to Nyx. I then cast Arcan Adaptation, naming ninjas. After that, I animate my Ink Mod Nexus. Going to combat, I send Yuriko plus the beast to Mathieu and the Ink Mod to Kelly. I get three Yuriko triggers and reveal Sunken Hollow, descendant of Soramaro, and Slitter Blade. My opponents lose five. This is a pretty soft Yuriko game, not gonna lie. 
In second main, I cast Propaganda and then Slitterblade. At the end step, Mathieu casts Worldly Tutor from Exile. He tutors for Dockside Extortionist, putting it on top of his deck. He goes to his upkeep and succeeds his Mana Crypt roll, before drawing and casting Dockside Extortionist. Entering the battlefield, he creates a whopping 13 treasures. He uses 4 of them to cast Austere Command, picking both mode to destroy all creatures. In reaction, Kelly sacrificed Bort or Mana Dorks to mill herself, milling Wolf Trader, Ferguson Delver, and a Burnished Heart. Conrad triggers 5 times from this and then 7 times from the Border Wipe. After that, Mathieu then drops Wooded Foothills and crack it for Basic Forest. He then casts Samut, Voice of Descent. Samut's war was intensely personal. She faced enemies she once loved as friends and horrors she once revered as gods. And follow it up with Selvala, Heart of the Wild. Since all his creatures have haste, he taps Selvala for 3 mana and casts Hunter's Prowess on his commander. He finally goes to combat, attacking Kelly with Samut for 12 damage. Upon connecting, he draws 12 cards. Kelly does not draw land to recast her commander, and casts Carrion Feeder instead. She then activates Castle Luxwain to draw a card and lose one. She equips the boots on the Carrion Feeder, and head into combat, sending it in Max's direction as I have a propaganda. Dr. Max recasts his commander, and follow it up with Eldrazi Displacer before passing. I cast Descendant of Soramaro. I animate my land into a flying 1-1. I go to combat and send my Igmat to Kelly once more, and ninjutsu my commander after no blockers are declared. And Mathieu reacts before damage with sword to plowshare on Yuriko. I gain a mere point of life as compensation. In second main, I replay my Igmat as land for turn and pass. Mathieu goes to his upkeep and fails his mana crypt trigger. Execute order 66. He then drops Spire Garden before casting Eleshnorn Grand Cenobite. In reaction, Kelly mills herself for one by sacrificing the feeder to the altar. She mills a swamp. The Eleshnorn resolves and turns off the majority of mine and Max deck. He then casts Sunforger and equips it to Samut. He head into combat, and being the only one without a blocker, Samut takes Kelly out of the game. Max untaps and casts Tangle Wire. He then pass. At the end step, I activate the Descendant to reorder the top 3 cards of my library. And at my upkeep, Tangle Wire forces me to tap 4 permanents, and I forget to do so. We catch the mistake by the end of the turn and tap my remaining 4 lands. I then drop Sunken Holo and cast Skimming Symmetry, giving a tutor for me and Mathieu. I cast Bola Citadel, and then cast the card I tutored for, Curtain Skull, paying 6 life. In reaction, Mathieu equips the Sunforger to cast Boros Charm, granting indestructible to all his creatures. A bit disappointed, I cast No Mercy from the top of my deck, and hitting a land, I pass. Mathieu goes to his upkeep. Upkeep? Ah yes, I live! <laughs> okay. He succeeds his mana crypt roll and taps 4 permanent to tangle wire. Before we leave the upkeep, Max activates Eldrazi Displacer twice to tap down Samut and Selvala. Mathieu then goes to his main face and casts Luca, Copper Coat Outcast. He minus 2 Luca to transmogify Selvala. He reveals a Thunderfoot Baloth and equips the Sunforger to it. Mathieu chooses his victim while going to combat and decides to send Eleshnorn and the Baloth to Dr. Max. He then pass. I draw for a turn, and then cast Bitter Blossom from the top of my deck. I cast the next card, which is Tessa, God of the Sea. I hit a basic island, but I'm allowed to play it for a turn. I then cast Siren Storm Tamer from the top as well, which dies as soon as it resolves. I don't remember the next card, but it costs more than 3 CMC. In a desperate attempt, I activate my Descendant to reorder my top 2. I then hardcast my commander again, achieving my 10th permanent. We then go to Mathieu's turn, and not being able to unequip Sunforger to dodge the citadel, he has to roll for the crypt. What? Like, Fuxiu Shanzu small roll, that's about it. Kesma, why? Oh my god! Sorry, Kat? Okay. Okay. In his main phase, he cast a fused wear and tear, targeting citadel and propaganda. I react by sacrificing all my non-lands permanents to make him lose 10 life. Mathieu reacts by unequipping Sunforger for Tiferi's protection, as I expected. While not being the best, it forces him to go through another mana crypt trigger. He floats his mana before the lands phases out. 
and once the stack has resolved, cast Lurking Predator. I don't have much to do on my turn. I'll end up Myriad Landscape and cast Wound Reflection for the fun of it. I realized that it was a mistake as soon as Matthew said that the Lurking Predator triggered. Luckily for me, he reveals a forest and put it on the bottom of the deck. At the final upkeep of the game, Matthew has one last roll to make. If he succeeds, wins it all. If he fails, he loses it all. Oh, what the fuck? His camera just cut. So, on tap, upkeep. That's <laughs> it too! Oh my god. Looking back at this game, it was quite the match. A lot of back and forth and well placed removals. Mathieu was very lucky on his last 3 rows, as any of them had a 50% chance of being lethal. While editing this game, I noticed two different line of plays that could have been taken by me and Max. While the Eldrazi Displacer was a nice control piece on the upkeep, keeping it at instant speed would have offered better control over the battlefield, as it would have been able to take creature out of combat, unequip the Sunforger, or even fizzle abilities like Lucas. For myself, when I tutored with Scheming Symmetry, I did not think about the combo with Sensei's Divining Top. I tried to find the perfect answer to cast with my citadel, but the top would have offered a lot of draws. Also, I'm not sure why I didn't cast the citadel first before fetching to look at the current top card of my library. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Mathieu and Max don't often play over webcam and it was really nice to get to play with them. Thank you to all our Patreons for supporting the channel, take care and see you soon. I um, uh, I gotta say, it was a pretty fun game. Uh, I really, really liked it. Uh, I, it. It started pretty wrong for me, but in the end, I came back strong. Mana Crypt is the carry. Um, I've rolled, I don't know, like three times, right? So I guess uh, I, I guess I'm the best magic player in the world. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I hate Phyrexia. <laughs>